Seven, RP2A. This is seventh grade ratios and proportional relationships. Uh, second part, subpart A, uh, video one. That's a lot of words. I basically am taking this standard and uh, doing a quick review of the coordinate plane before we get into talking about quantities that are in a uh, proportional relationship right here. Uh, we will not be talking about this yet in video one. We will be talking about it in the very near future. But before we do that, like I said, I want to become familiar with the coordinate plane. Pause the video right here and copy down these words. These are some terms that I'd like you to know. Please define them in your journals. I have the coordinate plane right here on this screen, and it is broken into four separate parts. And what are the lines that separate this grid into four parts? Well, we're gonna start with the two axes. The horizontal line that runs from left to right or right to left is called the x-axis, and the vertical line that runs up and down or down to up is the y-axis. And what those two axes do is it breaks this picture into four quadrants. In the upper right-hand quadrant, we ca uh, call this quadrant one. And we are going to be going in reverse or counterclockwise order. We're gonna go backward and call this upper left-hand corner quadrant two keep going down quadrant three and all the way over to the lower right here we have quadrant four it's important to note the signs of each of these quadrants so if i were to put each of these quadrants with particular signs uh, i'm going to get to this later on when we have some examples but if you are in the upper right quadrant you have uh, the x values being positive and your y coordinates being positive also. As you move over to quadrant two, your X coordinates become negative, but your Y coordinates are still going up from zero, so we call these positive. Quadrant three, we are going to the left of zero, which is negative, and downward, which is also negative. So negative for the X coordinate, negative for the Y coordinate, and then our last quadrant in the lower right, we always start from the origin, which to the right of zero is positive and downward is negative. So the X coordinate is positive and the Y coordinate we went downward, which is negative. Big arrow right here in the center, it's called the origin and that is an ordered pair that must be memorized. This ordered pair right in the center of where the axes meet is called zero, zero. So they're like two number lines if you think about it. We have the horizontal number line with zero being in the center and we have the vertical number line with zero also being in the center and that's called the origin. In this screen, we are to name the ordered pairs and describe its location. Describing its location might be new to you. Let's start, uh, I guess let's just go in alphabetical order. So locate point A. Point A is right here. So if I were to write the coordinates of point A, I'm gonna have to figure out what quadrant it's in in what order I should be putting my numbers into the parentheses. Here's how I teach it. Here's a picture of a diving board. Imagine the white diving board right in the middle of your picture here, the white diving board being the x-axis and the jumping upward or downward off of the diving board being your y-axis. So what are you going to do to be able to get some lift or air on your jump? You're gonna have to start all the way in the back here and you're gonna wanna run down the diving board and jump either up and then what eventually happens? 
you are going to come down. So this axis is what you're going to have to do first. You're going to have to go to the right and then either up or down or like myself, I'm quite afraid of water. So I'm going to get to the end and I'm going to stop. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go backwards off and then I'm going to go up and jump down. So if I am thinking about that in terms of plotting points, this x-axis is your diving board. So what am I going to have to do to get to point A? I'm going to have to run down the diving board and stop. So my, my first point is positive 1. And then to get to A, after I run to 1, what do I do? I jumped up and I stopped in the air and I stopped where? At positive 2, if you can see this number right across from it. So my ordered pair of A is 1, 2. And it says describe its location. Well, the location would be either quadrants or on one of the axes. So what quadrant is it in? I can describe it as being in quadrant 1. All right, part, point B. Let's go to point B next. Ordered pair B is over here in the left. Okay, so always start at the origin. Very important. We always start right here in the center on the diving board. And what are we going to do? We have to get, get our speed up. So we're going to be running to the left, which is at negative 2, on our grid line at negative 2. So we went left first, and then we went what direction? We went upward, and we went upward to where? Positive 5. And describe the location as being in, I'm going to write it short here, quadrant 2. I want you to write out the word. I just ran out of room there. So quadrant 2 is the location. Pause the video right now, and I'd like you to go through C, D, E, F, and G. All right, we're back. Ordered pair C. You should have at negative 2, negative 3, and that is quadrant, uh, where are we here? 1, 2, that's quadrant 3. Point D is at 4, negative 5, and that's quadrant 4, IV, that's an IV, quadrant 4. Point E. Okay, so E, remember we're starting at zero. I didn't run anywhere. I didn't run to the right and I didn't run to the left to get to E. So I must have just started at zero. And then I jumped what direction? I jumped upward and I jumped up to a six. And where is that located? It's not in a quadrant. E is not in quadrant 1, and it's not in quadrant 2. It's actually located on the y-axis. F. Where is F? OK, so start at 0, and we got to get our speed up. We're running, running on the diving board. We're running, and we're at, what, negative 5? And it looks like it's Mr. Wirtz who was afraid of the water, so he just stopped. And he didn't go up, and he didn't go down, so it must be at 0. And what is the location? It is located on the x-axis. Final one, G. G is right in the center of our number lines. We call that the origin. We call it 0, 0, and its location is the origin. So there is a quick review on how to plot points or find points on a coordinate plane and describe its location. In your journal, define the given terms from page two of the flip chart. Write a few sentences on what you think you learned from the video. If you have any questions, write them down and please describe one 
situation in which you would use a coordinate plane other than what? Other than the example that I just gave with the, uh, the grid lines. How else would you use that in the real world? Okay, see you in class.